flying the DJI Mini 3 Pro in tight spaces, such as indoors, through gaps or arches, or in a forest like we are today, can get you epic looking clips. But flying in these environments can also be intimidating. Today, we're gonna to take a look at tips that will help you do this more safely and get smoother and better looking videos. Let's jump right in. Now, if you're new around here, welcome. My name's Matthew, and I create videos helping you get the most from your drone. So if you would like to see more of that, please consider subscribing and make sure that notification bell is on so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. It would be greatly appreciated. All right, let's take a look at the first tip for flying your DJI Mini 3 Pro in tight spaces. Now, the first thing I recommend doing is that if you're flying in an environment such as indoors or in a forest, that you take the DJI Mini 3 Pro off from the ground. Now, hand launching is super useful, but something the drone has a tendency of doing whenever you hand launch it is to rise up into the air. And if you're standing inside or you're in a forest with overhanging branches like I am, the last thing you want to happen is for that drone to rise up into them branches or into the ceiling, as that could be a disaster. So I recommend that you take it off from the ground. Now, if you're in a forest and the ground is unsuitable like it is for me today, something you can do is simply put the drone on top of your backpack or any bag that you use to carry your drone to wherever you're filming from. And that way you can keep it raised up off the ground, but also take it off from the ground. Something that is also super important to check is that you're in cine mode. You don't want the drone to be in normal or sport mode when you take it off in tight spaces because a lapse of judgment or the wrong input on a joystick could send the drone very quickly off into branches and you could crash the drone. So you just wanna make sure that it's in cine mode so that the drone is moving around as slow as possible, especially when you're taking it off. Now, something that is super important to check is that the setting you have on the controller matches the setting shown on the top left of the screen on your controller. The reason for this is whenever you turn the drone on, it defaults to normal mode regardless of what's set on the controller. So as you can see, I have the controller set to semi mode, but if you take a look at the screen, it's actually showing normal mode. That's because I've just turned the drone off and it's defaulted to normal mode. So if this is happening, all you have to do is change the drone back to normal mode and then change it back to semi mode. And now you can see them modes match up. This is something you always want to check and it's especially important if you're flying in a tight space. Now the single most important tip I have from my experiences of flying my drone in tight spaces such as a forest is you want to position yourself directly behind the drone, looking along the path that the drone is going to be flying. Now I have my drone just here in front of me and as you can see there's a little path through this forest so I'm going to fly it forward through it. And the reason standing behind your drone and looking down the path of the drone is so crucial is because I can see any obstacles in real life, such as the branches, that might get in the way of the drone. And if I look as where the drone is going to be flying, I can see that the path is completely clear. As good as the screen is on the DJI RC, or as good as your phone screen is if you're using the RCN1, it's very hard sometimes to judge the distances of obstacles such as branches relative to where your drone is. And some branches are very hard to see at all, especially if it's a bright day. Some of them really fine branches or obstacles that are indoors, if you're flying indoors, maybe just don't show up that well on the screen. But if I'm looking directly where the drone is flying in real life, I can see them obstacles clearly. So if I hit record and start to fly the drone forward, I just can keep my eye on the drone, making sure that the path is clear at all times. Now my next tip for getting smooth videos whenever you're flying in tight environments, and this might sound counterintuitive, but I'll show you examples as to why, is to turn obstacle avoidance off. Now I will preface this by saying if you are gonna do this, you want to make sure that you can see the flight path is clear off your drone, as I mentioned in the first tip. But the reason you want to do that is because sometimes brake mode will break the drone prematurely, even if there's no obstacles in the way, and sometimes bypass mode will make the drone meander around, not getting you that perfectly smooth and straight clip. So let me show you some examples. So I have obstacle avoidance turned off right now just so the controller wasn't beeping as I was talking. But if I put it into brake mode, if I go to fly forward here, what you'll see is there is a branch coming up just at the top of the screen. And as I get close to it, even though I can see that the drone is clearing that branch perfectly fine in real life, that branch at the top of the screen is triggering the brake mode of the obstacle avoidance. And even though I'm pressing forward on the joystick, the drone is not flying forward. Now this is a good thing as a safety feature, especially if you're a beginner, the drone is being extra precautious to make sure that you stay well clear of any obstacles. But if you're, I'll just lower the drone down so it stops beeping. 
If you're looking to try and get a really cool clip flying in tight environments close to obstacles, then you'll find that the brake mode always kicks in and stops the drone even when you're clearing some obstacles. Now you might think, well, why not use bypass mode? But if I put it into bypass mode, what you'll see is bypass mode, especially in tight environments, has a habit of making the drone meander when the path flying forward is clear. So again, I'm below this branch that you can see at the top of the screen. If I fly forward, you can see I'm going to avoid it. But if I hit record and start to fly slowly forward here, I'm pressing forward on the right joystick, you can see bypass mode is actually making the drone go off and to the right. And this means I'm not getting a perfectly straight clip. So what you'll find using bypass mode is the drone usually won't fly straight in tight environments because it's sensing all these obstacles such as branches and that it'll be waving around all over the place. So again, what I recommend is that you turn obstacle avoidance off. Again, make sure that you can see the path is clear for your drone. Try and stand behind it and look directly down that flight path. And if I fly forward this time, what you'll see happens is the drone flies perfectly straight. It gets close to these obstacles but it continues to fly straight past them, getting this epic looking clip. Now my next tip is to turn on display radar map. And what this will do is this will show you on the screen the obstacles the drone is detecting, and it will allow you to see how close the drone is to some of them obstacles. And it's just really handy to have on the screen as a visual indicator so that you can see some of them obstacles that maybe the drone can see, but again, you might find quite hard to see on the screen such as branches. Now, as you can see at the minute, there's no visual indication of any obstacles the drone is sensing. But if I go into the settings menu and turn on display radar map, and this will work even if obstacle avoidance is turned off, if I now go back to the screen, you can see on the screen these orange lines showing obstacles that the drone is detecting. And if I fly close to some branches here, you can see that the um, lines will change from orange to red as the obstacles get closer to the drone. Now you can also see how close and where the obstacles are using the compass on the bottom left of the controller screen. So if I press the map here to enlarge it and then press the compass button on the bottom right of the map to change into compass mode, you can see on the compass screen the obstacles the drone is detecting appearing as the orange and red marks on that compass. And as I fly this drone around, you can see all them obstacles appearing on that compass and where they are relative to the drone. So this is super handy for situational awareness as you're flying your drone. Okay, these next two tips could literally save your drone. Now, if you're flying in environments such as a forest or indoors, you might overlook or not think about what happens if your drone loses signal. You don't want that drone to potentially rise up into your ceiling or into any branches as return to home kicks in. It would be better if, if I lost signal, the drone would just hover or even descend and land because the drone's only over there. So if I fly behind a tree and lose signal momentarily, I would rather the drone just hovered in place so that I could walk to it and either hand catch it or take back control off it and continue flying. So you can have the drone do that. If you scroll down in the settings to advanced safety settings, you will see a signal loss setting. Now at the minute it's set to return to home, but you can set this to either descend. So if I lose signal, the drone will just descend and land where it's at. And when you change that setting, you want to hit confirm or I can have it hover in place. So I'm gonna set it to hover because like I said, if I lose signal, the drone is just there. If it flies behind some branches and loses signal, I'd rather it just hovered because I can just walk over and take back control. So this is super important to set if you're flying in tight and narrow spaces. And another tip to make sure that you have the safest flight possible whenever you're flying in tight environments is to always make sure you have a GPS lock before you take the drone off. Now the reason this is super important is because the drone uses GPS for its positioning. And what you might find is that if you don't have a GPS lock, the drone might wander about in the air, even with no inputs on the joysticks. And if it's flying near branches or any obstacles and you have the obstacle avoidance turned off, it might wander into them branches. So you wanna make sure that you have GPS lock. Now, if you're in a forest like I am today with lots of tree coverage, what you might find is it takes a little bit longer than usual to get that GPS lock. But again, you just want to wait until you get that lock for the safest flight possible. Now, if you're in an environment where the tree coverage is just too much or you're indoors and you can't get a GPS lock, then you need to be extra careful and keep an eye on that drone at all times because it will wander about in the air slightly. 
Now before you even start flying in tight spaces, something I recommend you do is practice flying straight. Now that might sound super straightforward, after all you just press the joystick forward. But actually pressing it forward and holding it centre is harder than you think. And the first time you try it, you'll find that the drone will wander to the left or right as you learn to keep that joystick centred. So I recommend you come to an open area with a path or a track or something that's relatively straight that you can practice flying straight along and then just simply practice flying straight along it. And by doing this, you will build up the muscle memory to be able to fly your drone straight so that you can confidently do it when you start flying in tight spaces. Now, when you're flying in environments such as a forest, and this is especially important if it's a super bright day and that sun is shining through them trees, or maybe you're flying indoors and you have dark rooms and you have light rooms where there's more sun coming in through the windows, if you're in auto mode, what you will find happening is the drone will be constantly changing exposure. And that will not look very good in your video. So there's two ways that you can stop this happening. If you're using auto mode, the first way is by locking the exposure. And this means that the exposure won't change as you fly your drone around. Now you can do this by simply tapping and holding on the screen until you see auto exposure lock appear on the screen. And you'll also see a little closed padlock symbol inside a yellow square on your screen. And this will mean the exposure is now locked and as you fly about between them light and dark areas, the exposure won't be changing. To unlock the exposure at any time, you simply just want to tap the screen again and the auto exposure lock will be turned off. Now you can also map this to a function button on the controller so that you don't have to tap and hold the screen every time. And to do that, you want to go to settings, then you want to go to control, you want to scroll down to button customization, and then you can either have this set for the C1 or C2 button. So if I do the C1 button, you can see under camera, I can have this set to AE lock on or off. And now when I press that C1 button on the controller, you can see AE lock on, so the exposure won't change as I fly by. And then when I press again, you can see AE lock off. Now the second way you can make sure that exposure is not changing as you fly around is to use pro or manual mode by tapping the bottom right of the screen. And then you can adjust your ISO and shutter speed to your desired settings. And then as you fly your drone around, these settings won't change and you won't get these dramatic shifts in exposure as you're flying around. Now the next tip for getting smooth videos when flying close to obstacles or in tight environments is to remember that even if you turn obstacle avoidance off, downward detection or downward obstacle avoidance is always on. And what this means is if you're flying low to the ground and you maybe pass over a rock that's on the ground, your drone will actually rise up to avoid that. Even if you're just flying close over the top of it, the drone will detect it and it will actually rise up over it. And this will again give you this meandering effect up and down and not give you that smooth tracking shot. So if you want a video where the drone flies perfectly straight and doesn't wander up and down, you want to make sure your drone is a little bit above them obstacles so that the downward obstacle avoidance doesn't detect these and make the drone rise up above them. So let me show you two examples of this kicking in. I positioned the drone facing back towards me. You can see there's a little trail through this forest and you can see the trail rises up. But if I hit record and push forward on the right joystick, you can see even though obstacle avoidance is turned off, the drone is actually rising upwards so that it stays above this path as it rises up and the drone comes back to me. As another example of that downward obstacle avoidance always being on, Again, if I go into the settings here, you can see that I have the obstacle avoidance set to off. But if I put my hand underneath the drone, you can see that downward obstacle avoidance is always on, detecting my hand and rising up above it. So just remember, if you want the smoothest clips possible where the drone flies level at all times to keep it a little bit above any obstacles that it might encounter underneath it. So those are a couple of tips to make sure that you have the safest flight possible when flying in tight spaces and come away with the best looking videos. Now, if you've liked these tips and you've learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get more cinematic videos and better images with your drone, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and making sure that notification bell is on so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want to stick around and see a few more of them now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.